Hello everybody and welcome to JAM Academy. In this example, um, the objective of this lesson actually is to study the principles that govern a car going around a, an unbound circular track. Now, whenever you're going around a circular track, what we know is we need a centripetal force to help the car, to help us go around the circular track. So the first question I want you to be thinking about is what provides the centripetal force for a car to go around a circular track, a flat horizontal circular track? It's important you think about the question, but in order for you to answer the question, it will be helpful if you can actually pause this video and draw a free body diagram. Now, the next thing is, when you are going around a circular track, you have a higher tendency to skid outwards. Because you have a higher tendency to skid outwards and not skidding outwards, it means that there is a force preventing you from skidding outwards and that force is acting inwards, inwards. Um, so what is that force? that prevents the car from skidding outwards. So just think about it. So let's begin our talk by drawing a free body diagram. So this is a circular track of radius R and we have a car moving with a speed V. Our objective is to calculate the maximum speed that you can have to go around this track safely. We call that the speed limit. Um, the weight of the car acts vertically downwards. The normal force on the car, which acts on each tire, acts vertically upwards. The car has a tendency to skid outwards. Therefore, there is a force acting inwards on the car, preventing it from skidding outwards, and that force is static friction. So you can clearly see from our free body diagram that the static friction between the tires and the road provides the centripetal force required by the car to move around in a circle. Now, I know, I know, I know you might be thinking the car is moving. Why is the force between the tires of the car and the road static friction, not kinetic friction? Now, this is actually a very good thought. That means that you're actually thinking um, about what we are doing. Remember that even though the tire is rotating, the point of contact between the tire and the road is at rest. Listen carefully, the point of contact between the tires and the road is at rest. That explains why the static friction between the tires and the road is, if the point of contact was not at rest, the, the, the car will skid across the road. Uh, it will actually skid across the road which often happens if there is ice. Um, so that is the reason why. So the next thing is that we have to do is we just have to apply Newton's second law for both cases. So we know that the sum of forces in the y direction is equal to n minus mg. This is equal to zero. This implies that n is equal to mg. Let's call this equation one. Similarly, in the centripetal direction, F of R is equal to Fs, which is just gonna be mv squared divided by R. Now let's call this equation two. By definition, the static friction force is less than or equal to mu s n which means that the static friction force is less than or equal to mu s mg. But what do we know? This right here, let's call it equation three. What do we know? We know that um, the static friction force is equal to mv square over r. That means that mv square over r is less than or equal to mu s mg. The m's can cancel, 
which means that v square is less than or equal to mu s r g. Now, if you observe this equation, we can therefore conclude that the maximum speed that you can have and not skid outwards it's equal to the square root of mu s rg. We call this the speed limit for the curve. Now here is some very interesting fact. This speed limit does not depend on the mass. When you look at this equation, the masses all cancel out, which means that the speed limit for a particular circular track does not depend on the mass or, or, or the mass or the size of the car. For a small car and for a large truck, the speed limit is the same. That is mind blowing. And physically, maybe naturally doesn't make sense to you, but physically, actually, this is what it is. Now, the next thing that I'd like for you to take note is this. Observe here, the radius, the radius of the road is constant. The acceleration due to gravity is constant, which essentially implies that the speed limit of a flat circular track depends only on the coefficient of friction between your tires and the road. So if your tires are worn out, the, 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 the speed limit decreases. The road under wet conditions such as during rainfall, the coefficient of static friction greatly reduces. That also means that the speed limit decreases. That explains why it is advisable for you to drive around curved tracks way below speed limits. Now, also by fact of engineering, it is not advisable that we design roads in which the only factor that, de that decides the speed limit is the coefficient of static friction because the coefficient of static friction depends on several physical factors such as weather conditions that often affect the roads. Um, so we are going to look at in the next example how what can we do in order to solve this problem. Thank you so much and I look forward to the next lesson. Stay tuned and goodbye.